Johnson, our Secretary of State, about uh, voting, our military voting, and uh, how um, we're trying to make it uh, easier here in the uh, state of Michigan. Uh, Yesterday, we uh, talked with a member of the ACLU, uh, which has initiated a lawsuit against our Secretary of State over this uh, issue of uh, the checkbox in voter registration and uh, and at the ballot box that requires you to state whether you are a citizen before you're allowed to vote. And uh, the ACLU claims, of course, that uh, this is uh, illegal and makes it more difficult to vote. And uh, Ruth Johnson uh, says that there's a good reason for all of this. Uh, let's let's get into that. How, ma- how many people, non-citizens, are on the voter rolls right now in Michigan who really shouldn't be there and shouldn't vote? Well, um, we have information on 19% of non-citizens uh, the other 81 percent the federal government has, and unfortunately they have refused repeated attempts to ask for them to help us get the non-citizens off our voter rolls. So when we take one-fifth, uh, which we've collected over the last few years, um, we find that we had 963 non-citizens registered to vote. So if you do that times five, that gives you a pretty good idea of how many non-citizens are registered. We're trying to clean up the qualified voter file. We know a clean file means good elections with integrity. And the Pew Center on the states found that we had 102.54% of the eligible electorate registered to vote in 2008. So we signed a subscription with Social Security. And uh, we've taken off 30,000 dead people. We have 20,000 more. We're confirming. We're, um, we know that um, people uh, that are registered in two states are 72,000. That's just 15 of us that work together. Uh, So we're cleaning those off. And we know by looking at those records that 100 of them have voter history in both states in same elections. So we're trying to get a good qualified voter file. Uh, We were hoping the federal government would help us. I asked Social Security, Homeland Security, met with Homeland Security, and wrote a letter to the president, and uh, there's no hope there. So uh, at this point, we're on our own, and so the next best idea is to have something that's educational. And it's interesting to note, just getting back from the Middle East, that the federal postcard ballot application form, when our military fill it out to be able to vote, they must fill in an oval that says, I am a U.S. citizen and sign it. I don't think that's too much to ask for people here knowing that we have thousands of non-citizens registered. And it hurts those people, too. Um, We had a policy for over 30 years to ask people, even if they were non-citizens, to vote based on a federal requirement. The staff didn't like it, but the the feds, and I think it was probably with good intentions, but again, you know, the government... Uh, often we have unintended consequences with decisions like that, and here's a great example. So these people, and we have examples of it, such as the gentleman in Kalamazoo who was asked before he could speak English fluently if he would like to register to vote. He signed those papers, and then he voted, and then he faced possible deportation. Even though he was a model pre-citizen, he was doing everything right, he was a job provider, uh, his family's here, his house is here, his business is here. But when they ask him, have you voted? And I guess they spot check, and he said yes. Then they said, you're going to be deported. So we protect people that have been put in a very bad position because of this bad policy that the federal government forced Michigan to be part of. And we also make sure that our voter, our, our votes have integrity unto them because every time a non-citizen votes, it cancels out a legitimate vote by a citizen of the state. Well, exactly right, and uh, that's uh, that's the uh, concern. You know, I just saw a piece on on uh, Ohio and what's going on down there, and we mentioned that there was the effort made, in fact, by Obama administration lawyers to uh, uh, limit the amount of time that veterans have that uh, our, our military has to register to uh, to vote uh, absentee, and they've got no fault absentee voting down there in Ohio now. In fact, they they had an early voting session. I saw a video on this. And uh, there was one sign at the precinct that said, in-person absentee voting over here. Think about that for a moment, in-person absentee voting. And uh, they had an interview with one college student from Ohio State who was from Texas. And she said, well, I've registered to vote here in Ohio because uh, in Texas we pretty much know how the election, uh, the electorate is going to go. And I figure I can make a bigger difference with my vote in Ohio, so I'm going to vote here instead. And and I thought, my goodness, I mean, she has the potential to vote in two different states. And this is exactly what we're talking about in creating these safeguards is to prevent 
people from doing this sort of thing. I agree. I mean, we need a good qualified voter list. Unless we do, we have no, uh, we, we really have the potential of a lack of integrity. And we know some of these non-citizens have voted. A couple of them said, too bad, I wanted to do it. I work and pay taxes. And my father was an immigrant and actually lived in America for um, about 25 years before he became a citizen. He worked and paid taxes, too, and then he went through what he needed to to become a citizen. Um, my family did the same thing, and so did I. I'm a naturalized citizen. I was happy to go through the process and do it legally. Why can't everybody else do the exact same thing? Yes, it, and, and, and merely um, checking something that says I'm a U.S. citizen is not onerous. It is the law. We already have you right on the application name, address, birth date. Now we're just simply saying I'm a U.S. citizen since it is something that you must be to vote. It, it helps those people so they don't make a mistake, and we do have a number of people that did make a mistake. Most recently, a Canadian that voted and said, hey, I pay taxes, I should be able to vote. And when they had to fill out that form, we started it in February, May, and August, and um, it stopped them from voting yeah, because well, they guess didn't what? You, you don't get to make that decision. It's, it's our law. It's not your decision that uh, you pay taxes, you have a right to vote. I pay taxes in the city of Detroit. I can't go into Detroit and vote for city council or mayor that's the law period i, I deal with it you know that's it's real simple hey can you ever see uh you be uh, the secretary of state of michigan the office you or one of your successors later on uh sending out uh, absentee ballots to everybody or absentee ballot applications as they do in ohio you know um i i like as much convenience as we can get but we need security and i I do support no reason absentee, but only if people come in and under the same rules and the same guidelines if you were to show up at the polls, which is to show your ID. And then we have a safety net in Michigan. For those that don't have a driver's license or a personal ID, you simply sign an affidavit of identity. Again, you have to have a system that has some accountability, otherwise you have no control at all of making sure there's integrity in our elections. So uh, at some point, I would love to see no reason absentee without having to have a reason um, to uh, vote, but you would follow the same rules that we have for everybody else. Thanks for being with us, Secretary of State Ruth Johnson. Appreciate.